A reading from our Holy Gospel. Jesus was also invited to the wedding with his disciples. And when, his mother, when the wine ran out, the mothers of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to his servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the one of the scariest and most unnoticeable thing about Christianity and particularly American Christianity is that we can, we can become commonplace and we can become commonplace or we can become complacent that we as Christians can just sort of meld into mush living in existence confessing with our mouths and with our hearts but never really thinking about the Word of God. Never really digging into it. And so, and this happens to us all, we sin in finding in Christ a miracle worker. There's a problem with that. Christ wasn't a miracle worker. He performed miracles. But he was not sponsored by Barnum and Bailey. He didn't go around saying, look what I can do. And here we see his first miracle. And in his first miracle, he did not merely just do it to, because he could do it. And I bring this up every time this text comes up. What's the point in Christ's miracles? What's the point? Because even those who He healed, those who were blind and whose eyes He opened, those who were dumb and whose tongues He loosened, they all died anyway. So where's the miracle in that? We need to break the mold of what we understand about Christ and see that what He does, He does, as a big arrow that points to Him that He is the Messiah. He is the Christ, the One who is coming to purify His people. And that upon His death on the cross, that is done exactly. And so it seemed like any other day, I suppose, in Cana. I don't know what other days are like. So they go to the wedding and Jesus is invited there to which we still this day invite Jesus to our weddings. And apparently they had a pretty good time. They drank all the wine and the reception wasn't even over yet. And so his mother says to Christ, well to, to Jesus the Christ, they have no wine. And Jesus says, what's that got to do with me? And then you see something that is very unique in the text. And you miss it if you just read over the text. His mother says to his servants, do what he tells you to do. It's interesting because she didn't even address Jesus yet. He asks her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And she turns to his servants and says to his servants, do what he tells you to do. And guess what? St. Mary is still saying that to us today. Do what Christ tells you to do. 
And what is it that Christ tells pastors to do? Give the good wine. The blood of Christ. Give, it him, give them the good stuff. And here's the part that you don't want to miss. The true miracle is not that Christ is able to turn water into wine. We all know that He's able to do whatever He wants. He created the world. That's not the miracle. It's not the miracle at all. And it's certainly not the miracle that He was able to just give more wine to more people who were visiting. The true miracle is here when you see that the stick, six stone water jars were there for the Jew, Jewish rites of purification. In other words, unless you cleaned yourself in those pots, you are not right for the sacrifice. You are not clean for the sacrifice. In those pots stood holy water. And so when the mother of Jesus says to Jesus, or says to Jesus' servants, do whatever He asks of you, He points right to the purification jars and says, fill those up. Notice He didn't go to the Tupperware or anything else. He points to those and says, fill those up. And so they fill those up. And when His servant takes the wine from the purification jars and gives it to the bridegroom and gives it to the master of the banquet, they say, wow, this isn't Logan David. This isn't Man Shepherds. We've got something special here. And here's the special thing about it. It's not that the wine was stout or even that the water became wine. That's not the miracle. The miracle is that wet wine would be used for the purification of Christians. That same water from those jars that purified the Jewish people for the sacrifice would become the very blood of Christ who was the final sacrifice. That jar was not, those jars were not merely uh, filled with water, but they were filled with that which would become the blood of of the Son of God and to be the, cheer, the, the pure purification of us all. And so we have to get at, break this away from our heads that Jesus can do miracles. We, we, have, we need to understand that, that, that that's a duck. We know that Jesus can do miracles. In fact, many people basically asked Him to be a song and dance man. So what's, what signs do you have for us? And when they asked, Jesus said, I have no signs for you. But His disciples saw. His disciples saw the purification and the changing of water into wine. And when we break ourselves of understanding that Jesus, it's not about what Jesus can do, but what Jesus has the ability to do, and it's definitely not for uh, Philippians 4.13 to you about what you can do, but rather what has been done. And I wish that I could explain that in English the way that it is in Greek. Because when it says it has been done, it's not in the past tense. It's in continuance. The best way that I can say it in English is has been is and always will be. World without you. That's what we can say. So when we break ourselves out of this understanding of what Christ can do, we look at what Christ has done. That He has hung on the cross for our sake. Then we truly know the wonder of all wonders. That Christ Himself would be the final sacrifice, the purification, and that in this life, in this very life, we receive a foretaste of the good wine that is in heaven. We receive a 
a foretaste of the bread of life that we will receive in heaven. Today, this day, we will receive the wine from those jars made into the blood of Jesus Christ. <coughs> and so we must not look at, what, at Christ with our own eyes as if to say, wow, it's really neat what Jesus can do. Rather, see what a true miracle is. A true miracle is not water into wine. The true miracle is life into death into life. And that's what Christ offers us. That's what Christ gave to Peggy. That's what Christ gives to you. If He can change water into wine, certainly He can take and make water or make wine into blood and turn you from sinner to saint. And so He has. So let us no longer tarry, but prepare for the feast that is ahead of us with the good wine that is of Christ's blood.